5 to 11 servings of bread, cereal, or rice. What? 3 to 5 of vegetables and 4 of fruits. Is pst, their antioxidants and fiber help you to digest. What does the word quarantine actually mean? The word quarantine comes from Italian and more or less just means 40 days. Because in the times of the bubonic plague, which happened many hundreds of years ago, it was a really bad time in Europe because many people died from the bubonic plague. And in Italy, which is somewhere around here, they wanted to have a way to prevent the bubonic plague from entering Italy. So they told the ships to wait for 40 days before they could actually, the, the, the cargo and the, the passengers could actually enter Italy. They had to wait for 40 days before they could enter to make sure if any of them, any of them were infected, that the disease itself would be obvious and they could take care of that problem. So that's where the word quarantine came from. It just was a early method, waiting for 40 days to make sure the disease itself could not spread. Now, why is quarantine important? Well, if you think about Oceania, or more specifically Australia, about 300 years ago, there would have been no problem, no reason why we needed quarantine, because we wouldn't have had any you know, ships or planes coming to Australia, because Australia itself is quite isolated. It's an island. But nowadays, we have a lot more transport and a lot more things coming in and out of the country. So we have airports which travel passengers and cargo, and we also have these huge massive cargo docks which transports goods from around the world to Australia. So we need to have some way to make sure the disease itself can't enter Australia. So for example, there was the SARS virus which came from parts of Asia, and the SARS virus can obviously get to Australia through planes mostly, people are being affected by SARS. And there was also, there still has been, the mad cow disease, which is in parts of Europe, especially England. And that would get to Australia either through plane or through products, animal products being transported by ship. So there must be some way that we can protect Australia to make sure that disease doesn't get here. So that's what quarantine helps us to do. And also, if, even if it gets to Australia, there still has to be some way that we can make sure it doesn't spread from one place to the other. So for example, if it's in Queensland, if there have been infections in Queensland, we need to make sure it doesn't travel to New South Wales or to Northern Territory. And quarantine helps us to do that. So the actual dot point itself says discuss the role of quarantine in preventing the entry and spread of disease and plants and animals into Australia or across regions of Australia. So when it says we need to talk about the entry into Australia, that refers to from a different country. So we need to talk about that how it helps us to prevent spread of disease from a different country or a different continent, for example, from Europe to Australia, or from across regions of Australia. That's what the other part I talked about. How, for example, if it's in Queensland, if there's an infection in Queensland, how can we make sure it doesn't spread across Australia to different parts? That's the two we have to talk about. We have to talk about the role of quarantine. Now, we'll talk about, because it says animal and plants, we'll talk about the different types of quarantine that we find in Australia. And first, we we'll do the first part. We'll do about the, talking about the into part. So this refers to from a different country into Australia. So for example, there is something called human quarantine. And there is something, you probably should know this name or this, this, this these four letters, AQIS. That's what stands for the Australian Quarantine and Inspection Service. Now, this service makes sure that basically nothing enters Australia that shouldn't Australia, shouldn't enter, right? So anything that might be infected with certain viruses or bacteria or pathogens is controlled by the AQIS, the Australian Quarantine and Inspection Service, to help us prevent the entry of the pathogen or infected material. An example would be SARS, malaria or rabies. These are viruses or pathogens which infect humans. And if any humans, if, for example, you travel by airport, so not by airport, but by plane, you travel by plane and you exhibit symptoms, so if you have symptoms of SARS, malaria, rabies, then the AQIS, so the Border Patrol officers, will have to report you. So they will report passengers who seem to be having these symptoms. And that means you either have to be in quarantine, so it means you can't leave, you can't go into Australia, or you might be brought back to the country that you came from. Also, they make sure that they disinfect airplanes. So any airplane that comes from a different country will afterwards will be disinfected to kill any possible pathogens which might be on the, on the actual airplane. And they also set up mosquito nets on all airports. That helps us to catch mosquitoes which might have gone on the plane 
And these mosquitoes might obviously be vectors, like carry malaria. So we want to make sure we have different methods to prevent the spread of human sort of viruses or human diseases, such as SARS, malaria, rabies. Right? And the AQIS helps us do that for these different ways that I mentioned here. And then make sure that the actual disease doesn't enter Australia itself. Now, plant quarantine, that means that it refers to plant products or plants themselves. And the AQIS has a responsibility not only over human quarantine, but also over plant quarantine. Now, the first thing they do is they examine all plants and plant products. So by plant, I actually mean literally the plant itself, right? So there's a little bit of a shrub, or whatever else gets examined for pathogens and plant products as well. So this could be fruits, vegetables, seeds, all of these are plant products. These are products that come from plants. So they're being examined by these officers and in many cases they won't enter. So it's very hard to get and different types of plants and plant products into Australia because there's a prohibited list. And this prohibited list is usually to do with seeds, fruits and vegetables, especially the fresh kind, bulbs and wood. Right, so you can see this picture here. You can see your fresh fruit aren't allowed to enter fresh vegetables, soil as well. I'll talk about that in a second. And your different types of plant products. These are all not allowed to enter Australia because they are considered to be dangerous. They might have pathogens on them, which could spread into Australia. Now, we also check the soil, and this is usually on, for example, machines that we might import from overseas into Australia, machines, but also on, just on the boots of passengers on planes or ships. And the reason why is because the soil might also have pathogens that can cause disease, and we want to make sure there's no soil that enters Australia from other places because these soils might have different types of disease on it. Uh, so this is how we help do plant quarantine. We examine all plants and plant products. Many of them won't be able to enter at all because they have prohibited, there's a prohibited list, which means that these certain parts won't be able to enter Australia. We also check for soil on machines and, uh, and boots of passengers because soil itself could be infected as well. Now, how, what's animal quarantine? Well, animal quarantine refers to animals not being able to enter Australia or being, having to spend certain time in quarantine. So, for example, you have to, any pets, any animals that enter Australia have to spend lots of time, usually about a month, in quarantine. For example, your pets. Like my dog, who came from, we used to live in Singapore before we came to Australia about 10 years ago. And from Singapore, we had to keep our dog in quarantine for one month. So one month before he could enter and be with us as a family. But the funny thing is, when we actually wanted to pick him up, he was quite happy to stay here for a bit longer. So they obviously, they treat them quite well. They must be treating them quite well in quarantine. But yeah, pets have to spend time in quarantine to make sure that they're not infected with anything. That one month means that if they're infected, that we can tell by the end of that one month. But usually they spend their time in quarantine and they come out afterwards. There's also a prohibited list. That includes your uncanned meats, your dairy products. And also on your prohibited list is often different types of fur, and other non-food animal products, especially if they are in any way dangerous. Right? So many times, again, this is the prohibited list, many times animals can't enter, and if they do enter, they have to go for quarantine, they have to stay there for some time. Poultry product, that's your your chicken, chicken meat and your eggs, they can't enter. Your meat or your dairy products, you can, especially if they're not canned, so if they're canned, they can sometimes pass, if they're not canned, if they're fresh, they can't enter. And untreated hides of skins, that's talking about fur, but specific types of fur that can't enter. Right? So these are all methods that the AQIS, the Australian Quarantine Inspection Service, use to make sure that the spread of disease is minimized, right? Because these things might be infected with things coming from different countries. And by having these different procedures in place, we can make sure that they don't enter Australia. Now, this is the other part, the cross regions of Australia. So if it's if there's an infection in parts of Australia, how we can make sure it doesn't enter different parts of Australia. So for example, there's the Queensland fruit fly. So you can see here, this is a nice picture of the Queensland fruit fly. And it infests fruit. So what it does, it infests fruit, it lays its eggs into fruit itself. And that's how it travels from one place to the next. It can't actually, it's not very good, it doesn't fly far, so it can't really fly from one place to the next. But it can infect fruit. And that fruit then lands from one place to the next by, for example, us carrying it to one place to the next. And that's how the infection spreads. Uh, these cause huge problems for any, play, any, any fruit growing area because if they, if fruit flies get into fruit growing area, 
it will cause massive problems, it will destroy the crop, which means lots and lots of money. So we've got some parts of Queensland and parts of New South Wales which are infected, right? So Queensland and parts of New South Wales are infected, but parts of South Australia are not infected. Now these parts of South Australia are known as you know, the, the food producing areas. So much of our food is produced in South Australia and especially much of our fruit is produced in South Australia. So these parts which are at the moment not, effect, not infected, we want to make sure that these Australian Queensland food sites don't, don't get to South Australia. So how can we do that? Well, we have fines, we have border checkpoints, and we have awareness campaigns. So for example, here is a do not carry food into zones 10 kilometers ahead. These zones, which are the free zones, they have, don't have our Queensland food fly infections. They will have, you'll, you'll be fine if you bring food in that area. You'll, there'll be these border checkpoints, which if, at these border checkpoints, you have to put any food you have into the, the bin. And there are awareness campaigns to make sure you actually know that you aren't meant to bring your food into different parts of the, of the country. Right? And this is a map here. So for example, we've got New South Wales here, we've got Victoria here. And this part is a part that we want to make sure stays infection free, which is the parts of South Australia and a few parts of, of Victoria as well. Right? So here, again, there, all of these things apply. Fines, border checks, and awareness campaigns to make sure the fruit fly doesn't enter here. Now, in two, in two years' time, I'll also talk a bit about pyloxaria, which is a disease which can affect grapevine. And grapevine are there to make wine. So, again, we have the same idea. We have check, checks in place. These are parts of also South Australia and Victoria that are at the moment free of this disease. But we want to make sure we keep it disease-free, which is why we have these exclusion zones that nothing can enter from infected areas into these non-infected areas. And that's how it works when it comes to sort of inside Australia quarantine control. So I quickly, oh, what did I have here? Oh yeah, this is the this is the map. So this is the infected. So the infected area. I think this is the area we want to keep free. And some of these areas are infected, so we want to make sure we have places that we can control. Right? So these are the infected areas. These are the non-infected areas. We want to make sure the infection doesn't spread. Pyloxera, but I'll talk more about that in a couple of years' time. So for the dot point, describe the role of quarantine in preventing the entry and spread of disease and plants and animals into Australia or across regions of Australia. So we said earlier that we have this AQIS, which is our border control, quarantine control, and they do a really good job making sure that viruses that infect humans don't, especially the dangerous ones, don't enter Australia for these different ways we mentioned earlier. Report passengers, disinfect airplanes, and set up mosquito nets. We have plant quarantine, where the, the inspectors inspect all plants and plant products. Many of them won't be able to enter, especially seeds, fresh fruit, vegetables, bulb, wood, etc. Also make sure that we check the soil. That might be on machines or boots, because that could also be infected with different types of pathogens. And when it comes to animal quarantine, we make sure that any pets or other animals that do get into Australia have to spend lots of time in quarantine. For any disease, they might have to have sort of shown up. So they have time to investigate the, the actual pets. We have a prohibited list as well. That is usually due to uncanned meat, dairy products, etc. These cannot enter Australia. And so can certain types of fur, which has not been treated, and other non-animal products. Right? And this is the picture which shows you what can't enter Australia. And this makes sure that disease doesn't enter Australia and doesn't spread from Australia. But if it does spread, if it does get into Australia, then there are, other, are ways that we can make sure that it doesn't spread to other parts of Australia. And these were you know, the campaigns, stuff like having the exclusion zones, which are the zones which we want to make sure we keep free of the disease. And to make sure that it happens, we have got these fines, border checkpoints to make sure that everything's being checked that goes in and out of that area, and awareness campaigns. An example was with the Queensland fruit fly, which infects parts of New South Wales and Queensland, but South Australia is not infected, and they want to keep it that way. And they have these things in place to make sure that stays that way. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.